Welcome to Wapi Data's update on the Australian housing market for July 2012. In the month of June, we saw Australian capital city dwelling values increase by 1%. That was after values fell by 1.4% in May, and values are now down by 1.2% over the first half of the year. Looking forward, we are expecting interest rates are likely to fall a little bit further, which should provide some further stimulus to the Australian housing market. Despite the June rise, it's probably too early to call a market recovery. We need to see a consistent month-on-month -month trend before we can confidently say that values have moved into the recovery phase. Over the first half of the year, dwelling values are down 1.2% across the combined capital cities and 6.5% lower from the October 2010 peak. Looking at some of our leading indicators, we are seeing improvements in the selling time and rate of vendor discounting. The average time on market for a typical capital city house is now just over two months at 62 days and vendor discounting has improved to 7% after peaking at 7.9% in July last year. The weighted average auction clearance rate has remained above 50% across nine of the last 12 weeks, with Melbourne and Sydney, the two largest auction markets, consistently recording clearance rates above 50%, apart from the long weekend when auction clearance rates uh, fell away. The number of newly advertised properties continuing to trend lower as well, which is assisting with a reduction in the total stock levels. Over the four weeks ending July 1st, we recorded slightly more than 300,000 unique properties being advertised for sale, which is about 11% lower than the November peak in listings from last year. The reduction in stock levels is a healthy sign for the housing market, however the number of homes that are available for sale needs to reduce significantly further before effective supply levels return to what might be described as more normal levels. Market conditions are quite different from city to city, so here's a quick wrap of market conditions across each of the capitals. Sydney values staged a 1% improvement in June, bringing the cumulative decline in Sydney values to 4% since they peaked back in November 2010. Both house values and unit values recorded a rise over the month, however the trend shows units have shown more resilience to the downturn compared with houses. Unit values have actually shown a 1% improvement in Sydney over the past 12 months, compared with a 2.7% fall in detached house values. Sydney rental yields are at 4.4% for houses, which is slightly higher than the capital city average of 4.2%, and units are showing a gross yield of 4.9%, which is spot on the capital city average. Melbourne dwelling values rose by 1% in June, due entirely to an increase in house values, which were up 1.4%. Conversely, unit values were down 1.4% over the month of June. Over the past year, both houses and unit values in Melbourne have fallen by 6.6%. That's the largest annual fall across the major capital cities. Rental rates in Melbourne have remained fairly flat over the past year. However, yields have shown some improvement on the back of lower dwelling values. Despite the improvement, yields remain well and truly the lowest of any capital city, with houses returning 3.7% gross and units 4.5% gross. Brisbane's housing market also saw a 1% gain over the month of June, and on a trend basis, the rate of decline is improving. Over the past 12 months, Brisbane values have fallen by 4.7%, which is the smallest annual decline in values since March last year. The Brisbane unit market is showing a more solid turnaround than detached houses. Over the past 12 months, Brisbane house values have fallen by 4.9%, compared with a 2.5% decline across the unit market. Brisbane rental rates are also moving higher, particularly in the unit market where weekly rents have increased by 5% over the past year. Due to the fact that rents are higher and that Brisbane values are down by a little bit more than 11% since they peaked, yields are now well above average at 4.6% and 5.5% respectively for houses and units. Adelaide was one of only two capital cities to record a fall in dwelling values over the month of June with a drop of 1.1% over the month. The results have been pulled down by a weaker unit market where values have fallen by 3.8% over the past year compared with a 2.3% fall in the detached house market. Adelaide's rental market is currently quite weak, with weekly rents recording slight falls over the past 12 months. Rental yields are at about average levels, with houses returning 4.3% gross and units 4.8% gross. Perth is continuing to stage a turnaround in market conditions. Dwelling values rose over the month, and over the year, the result of a 1.4% decline in values is the best annual result of any capital city. Perth's recovery is being led by the detached housing sector. House values are 1.1% lower over the past year compared with a 4.5% fall in the unit market.
Perth's rental market is also going gangbusters, with weekly rents up 16% for houses over the year and just over 13% in the unit market. Rental yields are now 4.4% for houses and 4.9% for units. Despite a large bounce in June, the trend in the Hobart housing market appears to be quite soft, with quarterly movements in the index showing a 1.4% fall in values, which is a slightly weaker result than the combined capital's average. The cumulative decline in Hobart dwelling values is now 8.9% since the market peaked back in November 2009. Rental markets also appear quite soft across Hobart, with weekly rents showing a 9% fall over the year for detached houses. Even though rents are quite soft, rental yields are higher than the capital city average at 5.1% for houses and 5.4% for units. Darwin's housing market is showing a positive trend. Darwin was one of only two capital cities to record a fall in home values over the month of June. However, the trend has been fairly positive for Darwin. Values are up 2.2% over the first half of 2012 across both the house and unit market. Darwin rents are also rising quite swiftly on the back of strong demand. House rents have risen by 7% over the past 12 months and unit rents are up a bit more than 11% over the year. Rental yields continue to be the strongest of any capital city as they have been for several years. Both houses and units are showing a gross return of 6.1%. Canberra is one of the only capital cities to record an improvement in dwelling values over the past year. Over the 12 months to June 2012, Canberra dwelling values have increased by 1.3%, driven by gains in the detached housing sector as opposed to the unit market where values are lower than what they were at the same time last year. Rental yields remain well above the combined capital's average with houses providing a 4.6% gross yield and units a 5.8% gross yield. Going back to the June results across the combined capital cities, the rise was broad based with all capital cities apart from Adelaide and Darwin recording an increase in values. The month on month gain comes after variable mortgage rates have come down by about 100 basis points, providing an improved level of affordability in the housing market. The outlook for interest rates remains positive, although the Reserve Bank chose to hold at their most uh, recent meeting in July, most economists are continuing to predict interest rates will move lower by the end of the year. The ASX interest rate futures market is predicting the cash rate will be 50 basis points lower by the end of the year. At the current setting, variable mortgage rates are about 100 basis points lower than their peak from late last year, which should provide some broad-based stimulus to the housing market. We are yet to see a marked improvement in consumer confidence, however, which potentially makes the June gain somewhat tenuous. Unless we see consumer confidence rise from the currently low levels, it's hard to imagine that a recovery of any magnitude can be sustained in the housing market. This month we fielded quite a few questions from viewers, and we are focusing on an interesting question from Scott, who lives in the Brisbane suburb of Marika. Scott is considering purchasing an investment property in one of Queensland's mining towns, but he's worried about the risks associated with such an investment. Well, Scott, the best response I can give you is that you're absolutely right. There is much more risk associated with an investment in an area that isn't supported by multiple economic pillars. Mining towns are generally solely reliant on the success of a particular commodity, such as coal in Queensland's Bowen Basin or iron ore in the Pilbara. The risk is that if the commodity prices fall significantly or the mining sector suffers a downturn, demand for housing dries up, vacancy rates rise and property values fall. Like any investment though, risk is generally accompanied by higher returns. Why else would you take the risk? Rental yields tend to be high and capital gains in most of the mining areas and resource driven regions have been strong. The best advice I can give you is to do your research and make an educated investment decision based on your confidence with the commodities sector. I personally have some investments in mining towns that have done very well. For the less risk adverse, I'd suggest looking towards the major regional centres that act as service centres for the mines. These markets are generally more economically diversified and hold an inherently lower level of risk. Thank you for tuning into RPData's housing market overview. As always, you can head to www.rpdata.com for more information about your local housing market conditions.